let's go into the health signal. We could say that the signals don't emit until uh, on ready has actually occurred. So if we create a var ready, and then we say after ready, ready equals true, make this a Boolean. So to pick up again, we want to make sure that we only emit health changed signals if this script is already ready, because uh, on the first load where we're just setting the health initially, the health hasn't exactly changed, we're just setting the health. So we want to make sure about that. Now I was going to set up the ready Boolean, but it appears that ready is already redefined. Um, it could be conflicting with the ready function there. Or I don't know, there might actually be a ready property that I don't know about. So signal, I'm going to have a variable that would just say uh, var ready done, which is false by default. And then when ready is done here, I'll say ready done equals true. If we wanted to be absolutely sure that all versions of ready were done calling, we could use the on ready uh, signal. And uh, I don't know, maybe, yeah, sure. I could just show how that would be done. So we could say ready dot connect and then underscore on ready and remove this to function on ready and just put ready done equals true. And what this would mean is that if we have a child class that's also calling ready and then it does super ready to get this code to run, that I think this would make sure that all versions of the ready function are done being run before it actually does this. So technically speaking, I think this would be a little bit more correct, although either would work in probably 99% of cases. So we have ready done. So we're just going to have to check here if ready done, then we're going to emit the signals. Otherwise, we're not going to emit the signals because this is like the first set. Um, another alternative would be so I think that should work good. If we hit play now, we shouldn't see the 100s pop up. So as you can see, the numbers only appear uh, after they start taking damage, not on the first load set of that value. So that works. <clears throat> now going back over to the health change, the label, the label settings, the font is way too big. So in our game, uh, the camera, I think, scales it up two or three times. So if we hit play, it should still be pretty large on the screen. So we got that negative one there. And we probably would change it to something else, like a pixel art font. Actually, it does really bother me. I do want a font that works for this. Um, let's grab something. So a pretty good font we can get off itch.io is M5X7. So I'm going to download that to the project, and we'll use that as our main font. And I'm going to create a folder in the project, the file system for it. I'll just call it uh, fonts. And uh, maybe I actually move the fonts folder into art. Fonts is probably only going to contain one or two files for like the whole project. And to have it in the root directory is like a little bit too much space, I would think, for giving it, if that makes any sense. So if you just pop it in there, go back to the project, it should show up as a .ttf file here, and you can use that in Godot. So um, regarding using the font settings, I think what I want to do is create a theme, and I'll do that on gameplay. I'll click on UI. This theme will apply to every control that you add to the UI. So if we expand theme here in the inspector, new theme, um, we'll expand that. I'm going to use the default font, just drag and drop. Default font size, let's say 12 or 16 maybe. You can see a preview down here at the bottom. I'm going to save this to the project. Right click save as. Uh, da, 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 da. Where do I want to put this? Probably in UI. So let's save this as UI theme dot, uh, whatever the default is, I think it might be TRES resource. And now if we hit play, when we shoot a guy, it should be using the new font, but I'm not sure if it is. Uh, so let's expand gameplay UI, click on these. Maybe the label settings is just kind of overriding that. So if we go to the health changed label, we can undo the label settings because I think that's overriding the theme. Hit play and let's shoot up guys yeah i think the font changed here and you can see that uh this font is more like pixel perfect there's no anti-aliasing so those kind of pixel fonts work a lot better for these um type of games let's say right click on health change label give it a add child node a timer okay and this timer can just be one second let's say one shot auto start uh, so it's going to play once and then we're going to connect to the signal when this timer is up we remove it from the scene inside of the health changed label 
let's give it the reference to the timer and then let's give it a move vector or maybe move speed and this will be a vector two we could say equals vector two and i want it to go up by default so that's going to be zero and then negative 100 or so i'm thinking um so this would be like the speed per second of delta time and then we can use the function underscore process to move it so let's say global position is plus equals move speed times delta now remember this is a vector two so if we add a x value here it can move to the right or diagonally as well and then on ready okay let's move this below above process i'll port function underscore ready and then we'll connect to timer dot uh let's say timeout dot connect and we'll do on timeout as the callback down here at the bottom we'll put function underscore uh on timeout and timeout is one word so i should get rid of that underscore there so on timeout we're going to remove this from the scene so i'll just say q free uh, Q3 just waits till the end of the frame before removing it. So anything else that is for any reason, depending on this object, will have a time to finish up its scripts before everything gets removed at the end of the frame. Okay, I think that's probably pretty much it. So let's hit play. Uh, let's shoot. And I did not set a timer. So in the inspector, we have to go to health, change label, and assign the timer. Hit play. And let's shoot. Okay, so yep, there's our damage text. It moves too fast and it lasts for too long, I would say. So let's go into the script. I'm going to change this to negative 75, hit save just for the default. On timer, I'm going to make it 0 0.5 seconds. So let's hit play again and see if that's a little better. Okay, so it kind of works. Um, Yeah, it's, it's a little fast though. It's a little fast. So I'll make it negative 50 for the move speed vector. So let's hit play again shoot some enemies and there is our floating combat text oh and it also works when they hit us so you can see we're taking 10 damage a hit pretty unfair considering the projectile only does one but hey and you can also see that we easily get hit two or three times so let me hit play and kind of re-demonstrate that watch as the play will be in the hit state and get hit multiple times during the hit state which is not good yeah, okay, there we go. Negative 10, but two times during a hit state. So being hit while the character's in a hit state and can't move is pretty unfair. So that's what I wanted to point out was happening behind the scenes, but now we can see it visually. So we want to take our player. I'll go into the player scene and make sure that the default animation is actually run. Let's play that. And now in the world, what's going on? So I'm going to jump into the level and move our player down a bit. Let's make him actually sit on the ground when the game starts. Same with this invader, I think. Doesn't make a lot of sense for them to start above the ground. And actually, if I look at this, I can see that the physics shape is making the invader above the ground too. That's a little wonky, so I'll jump into the invader scene. And yeah, we either have to move the character sprite down a frame like that, or we'd have to move the physics shapes up a frame. But if we're moving this right, we should also move some of these other physics shapes. So I'll move this collision hitbox down. Okay, maybe this hurt box should actually shrink a little bit and I'll move it down. So as long as the invader is going to stand on top of the ground, that's what makes sense. So back in world, we should see them flush against the ground. Didn't save level one, so I need to save that so that the world can update. Okay, now he's on the ground in the world as well. So on the player scene, let's make it so that when our character gets hit or dies, that we set the character to be invincible. So there would be two ways to approach this. One would be that you take all of the incoming damage and make it zero. Uh, the other would be that you uh, remove the ability to access the hurt box. Or I guess a third would be that you disable damage, but you still allow the hurt box to be uh, hit in the case of a healing effect. So maybe we'd want the character to be able to be healed but not to be able to be damaged when the character's in a hit stun so if you disable the hurt box entirely it wouldn't be able to be targeted by anything so that might not be what we want okay so in order to take our hurt boxes and make them invincible uh what i think i want to do is as part of the sequence for the player behave tree we'll add an action where we target the hurt boxes and set a property invincible to make them invincible so in the hurt box 2d 
I will make a at export bar invincible and then and not invincible. Okay, so by default, pretty much every hurt box is going to be off for the invincibility. So we need to create a uh, action on the hit sequence. I'll right click here, add child node, and say um, action leaf. Let's rename this to be set hurt box invincibility. I'll right click here, extend the script, and let's put it in objects. So which is an array of hurt box 2D. And we want uh, export var make invincible, or maybe just invincible. And this will be, well, just a Boolean. I guess we don't have to make it invincible by default. So just going to toggle the value to whatever we want on or off, and we can add it twice, once to turn it on, once to turn it off. So function before run, which is going to take a p actor, we're not going to use that, underscore p actor, type node, and then underscore p blackboard, which is a blackboard, and then this will return void. We're going to take each hurt box, so for hurt box and hurt boxes, we're going to take hurt box dot invincible, and that's going to equal our invincible property. And then we need to do function tick, which is going to have the same parameters here. So just copy those. This returns an int. After we set the invincibility property, we can simply just do return success. And that's probably all we need. So after we remove the shader, we want to set hurtbox invincibility off. So I'll add in all the hurtboxes here. Let's assign the hurtbox for the player. Then I want to copy this node and paste it into the sequence. And let's move this before the play hit action. And I'm going to, um, and then I'm going to toggle this on with the same hurt boxes. The final hurt box invincibility can say uh, set hurt box not invincible. And the first one will be set hurt box invincibility. Uh, so now basically, while play hit action is running, it's going to be invincible. And once it's done, it's not going to be invincible anymore. So if we hit play, uh, we should be able to take damage and then the invincibility turns off. Let's see if I can get hit twice. It would probably be easier to see if I open up uh, level one and we duplicate a few more invaders so that there's a lot more chances to be hit, but we should only see the damage text appear once. So I'll go in here and you can saw that we only get damaged once, even though we're running through multiple guys. So that is one approach to invincibility. It does kind of depend on us having the behave tree, but if we're using that for all of our enemies and a player as well, then I think it's okay to set it up there. Although there's many other options. I did have other ideas in mind, like you could uh, basically manage it straight in the hurt box by reading from the blackboard of this hit data. You could disable the collision shapes entirely until another event turns them back on. Therefore, the character wouldn't be able to be interacted with by anything that targets the player layer. It's really just a lot of approaches.